Okay, just before we start, if you think you are a good looker, I might have something for you, because this, uh, this whatever it is, is it a glasses case or a pen case or something, from www.goodlookers.co.uk was dropped on the floor. So if you think that applies to you, come and see me, I've got it. So the next presentation is about STACK, an assessment system for mathematics in Moodle quiz, and we've got Dr. Constantina Zerva from the University of Edinburgh. There we go. Hello, everybody. That's my first Moodle Moot. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to talk about uh, a project that I'm involved at the School of Mathematics at the University of Edinburgh. So we are creating our own online assessments for a range of mathematics courses using STAC, an assessment system for mathematics in Moodle quiz. I work with Professor Chris Sanguin, who is a developer of STAC, and Dr. George Kinner, who is a lecturer in technology enhanced mathematics education. But they are not here today. So what is STAC? STAC stands for System for Teaching and Assessment Using Computer Algebra Kernel. So it's an assessment system for mathematics, sciences, and related disciplines. It's an optional plugin for Moodle quizzes. So I won't feel insulted if you've never heard of it before. Students type an answer as a form of algebraic expression. And with STAC, we move assessments well beyond multiple choice questions. So at that point, let's think a bit about multiple choice questions. Okay, they are easy to make, very easy to mark, probably ideal for online assessments, but we can't have a whole assignment based on multiple choice questions, especially in mathematics and sciences. So what is wrong with multiple choice questions? So it's a bit like gabbling, isn't it? Like, even if you have no idea what is the correct answer, you have a good chance just to pick one by chance and maybe be lucky and be the correct answer. So in this particular question, I know, yeah, it's tricky. I have no idea what's the correct answer. So if everybody knows, you can tell me. So if I had to answer it, probably I will be by gambling. So a second reason, probably that's more related with mathematics, is that we can have multiple choice questions that probably assess what we would like to assess. Like here's a very easy example of how to solve a, quadrat to solve a quadratic equation. So the purpose of the question is to figure out that students really know how to solve a quadratic. But is it necessary to solve the quadratic in order to figure out which is the correct answer? Do you really need to solve it? I think not. If you just check the answers, you can figure out which is the correct answer without even solving it, without even knowing the formula. So actually, students, they don't really solve multiple choice questions. They just check the answers, and they can easily um, answer them. So for this quadratic, if you haven't figured it, yet, that's the correct answer, but I'm sure everybody figured it. So with computer-edit assessments in mathematics, we want to establish the mathematical properties of an algebraic expression. First of all, we want to, we want to figure out that the student's answer is algebraically equivalent with the correct answer, and that is also given in the correct form. So x plus x is equal, is algebraically equal to 2x but would you like to accept x plus x as a student's answer and not 2x? So the computer ed edit assessments, they need to be clear enough and distinguish between these two things. So STAG uses the computer algebra system maxima. It can generate random structure questions. The answers contain mathematical content. It establishes the mathematical properties of those answers. We can use it for formative and summative assessments and stores all data for later analysis. So I'm going to talk through this point just by using examples of stack questions. So I hope that I won't scare you and you won't run out of the room till the end of this talk. Because I believe I picked these ones, but I may, I may 
be wrong. So that's how a stack equation looks like. So by randomization, we may have random version of this question. So randomization means we may have random numbers, but the difficulty of the question needs to be the same. So in a case like that, we may decide the number three to have a different value for each student, but the general question should have the same amount of difficulty. With stack, we can have plots which are consistent with the randomization. So they're not static plots. For each random version, you can have the individual plots that corresponds to this version. And you can have plots at the question text, or at the feedback session, or at the work solution. A very important figure is that we have line-by-line -line reasoning. That's a new feature for in Stack 3.6, and it works only in limited cases. But we can actually assess the work of the student line by line. We can actually check if the reasoning of the student is the correct one. Not only the final answer, but actually the whole working. So let's try to see how a student put an answer. We have a um, okay, relatively simple integral. So you're a student, you evaluate it, and you put your answer. So if it's a formative assessment, we may allow students to check the answer and see if it is correct or not, and they may allow it to resubmit the answer. So for this integral, has anybody figured the correct answer? Yeah, you can shout it loud. No, maybe not, okay. So, correct answer, one over 32. The student puts the correct answer, takes feedback, correct answer, correct answer well done. So that's good. So what happens if the student doesn't put the correct answer? Let's say I put an answer like that. Just incorrect answer. Okay, that's not so helpful for the student because the student maybe doesn't know what's going wrong. So actually, the computer algebra helps a lot to that because it's better if you have a feedback like that. Your answer is the negative of, the, of what that expected. Have you got the limits in the wrong way around? So the student have some hints of what went wrong and can actually resubmit the answer. So in mathematics, there are very common mistakes that students do. So we can actually implement this in our solutions and the system can give useful feedback. So another interesting thing is that we separate correctness from validity. So what I me, mean, as a teacher, I may not want to allow students to type floating point numbers. Why to type floating point numbers? They don't really exist, do they? So if a student puts an answer like that, won't get penalized because it will receive a comment that this answer is invalid. So we won't want to penalize the students for validity, but just for correctness. So that's a different example of a stack question with feedback. So you want to factorize uh, a form. So the computer algebra system can actually check the student's answer and check if it is fully factorized and give specific feedback of, of where is needed to be done a bit of extra work. The student can resubmit and the teacher can decide what kind of penalty the student will have or if the student will have any penalty or not. So each question comes with fully worked solution, so the teacher is allowed to have a fully worked solution, and the fully worked solution can follow the randomization. So that's the fully worked solution for the previous integral. So the teacher can ha has access to the live quizzes at every time and can have uh, a look of uh, all the results of every student, so this is how, how it looks like. So you can go and check all the answers that students put, not only the final answer, but all the answers that the, the student may put and then resubmitted something. So all these data are quite useful in order to analyze them later. We use Stack to run an online mock exam, and this is the marks distribution. So now we're in the process of trying to see how the marks in the mock exam correlate with the marks in the real exam. And uh, we'll try to figure out if it is possible in the future to use TAC for exams as well. 
So this year we use TAC for a range of mathematical courses. So we use it for like five courses in general, two in semester one, introduction to linear algebra that has 600 students, mathematics for natural sciences, which has 150 students, calculus and its applications with 500 students, engineering mathematics, 300 students, and mathematics for natural sciences, 150 students. All these courses had weekly online assessments, plus proper homework handwritten from the students as well, but we're focusing on the online assessments. So each course has various ways of assessing students online. So for introduction to linear algebra, they had two pre-lectures reading quizzes every week, plus one skill quiz. Uh, some of these quizzes had time, some of them had unlimited time, in some of the students are allowed to have one attempt or multiple attempts, depending on what each teacher wants to do. So for engineering mathematics, we had three quizzes which didn't count for the final mark and one test that counted towards the final mark every single week. And for calculus and application, we had one reading quiz and one skill quiz every week. So these, are, these were quite a lot of questions and we have quite a lot of data. So for the first run, most of the questions were simply like, well, correct answer, well done, wrong answer, which is not the correct thing. So by analyzing all students' data between now and next semester, we'll implement all common mistakes and then students will have more useful feedback, uh, which is really important for mathematics in general. So I think that, that was my talk. And you may want to prove the following. These are algebraic equivalent, but which is the best answer? Which is the one that you would accept as correct answer to your teaching? So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions, please. Um, I was just wondering whether the uh, stack actually works with the equation editor in the Atto text editor, or do the students just have to type it themselves? But the students type. Okay. The students type their answer, actually, yes. They need to type their answer. Okay, so they don't use an, an, an editor that helps them write the no, equation? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Thanks. We are open to suggestions. Um, just following up on that, do the students therefore need to learn something about what format is acceptable and, and also with that do they get live feedback of how what they've typed in has been interpreted yes they have they immediately see how the answer is interpreted and we have also some uh, quizzes initially before actually taking the quizzes in the courses of how they need to put the correct answers but actually the students actually let's say don't take these quizzes they just try to put their answer, but most of the time they have no problem because they can see immediately how their answer is. Thank you. <clears throat> I was very excited by this talk because I'm, I'm a software developer who's done, and I've helped contribute to Stack, so I, I'm quite biased in its favor. It's a very cool thing, and I'm very proud, proud to have helped build it. Um, on the subject of different input types, the way it's structured is there are different types of input, and we don't currently have one that works with a graphic equation editor, uh, but that could easily be done. It's just, it turns out that's not something that's really needed, because actually, if you're in the area of maths, wherever you input maths into a computer, you have to use some sort of syntax. So learning to communicate maths into the computer is actually something you need to learn. And as you type, it's playing it back in sort of typeset form. So it's actually a really good way to learn that. So that's, I think, why we don't have an equation editor input. It's actually not desirable most of the time that it could be done. Hi, I'm just wondering, um, why did you look at any other editors, uh, MapleTA, whereas um, why did you go with Stack? 
Actually, you used Maple TA till recently, and we decided to move through Stack because Stack is more robust, and <coughs> probably it's let's say it's we want the students to type mathematics. We want to take this knowledge somehow and be confident in typing mathematics. So we decided to move all our online assessments using Stack. And would you consider better for graphics? I, we are con looking at our. Um, text editors at the moment for, for maths and different things at the moment. And we were considering moving, we're using mirrors, considering moving to Maple. And is this, is this a better option, definitely, do you think? I don't really know. Okay. Any others? Oh, hold on, I'll come. Sorry, me again. Um, when I, I looked into this briefly, and it seemed like you had to set up a whole separate server to do the stack stuff. Did, is that what you had to do at your place, or did you find some kind of hosted solution that would do that side for you? Did that make sense? Not really. So I'm not. I'm not in the development behind. Right, you okay. know that. I'm just. Oh, Tim knows. I'll just pass the mic over. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, with the geek hat on. Um, yes, it is a pain to install because you need to be able to do the math. This Maxima software we use, it's an open source computer algebra system for handling the maths. Yes, you need to install that and that's a hassle to get it working. <clears throat> Once it's working, it does seem to be remarkably reliable. Our students answer about, I'm from the Open University, our students answer about 30,000 stack questions a week jumping up to about twice that in any week where there's an assessment deadline. Sorry, Tim, follow-on question for that. Is it as much hassle for every upgrade? No. When we were started, we were quite nervous about how much hassle it would be to keep it working, because it's doing some quite complicated stuff on the server, and it's been remarkable how little hassle it's been. Um, don't want to jinx it, but <laughs> most of the time, don't you have to think about it at all? It just sits there doing its stuff. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yep. Here we go. Um, I'm quite interested in the line by line marking. How does that work? How does a middle grade the workings so of a student? So it's it's a computer algebra system behind Stack that does this. So it goes from one line, so you have a correct expression in one line, and then you need to have a correct expression on the other line. It's quite a new thing. We use it only in limited cases, like with one variable till now, and it's something we really want to develop it any further because that's quite important in mathematics. Uh, just a follow-on question to that. Um, if the student skips a line and goes down to the next line, will the computer program be smart enough to know that they've still got that correct? It depends if it is important or not. Okay. Thank you. No. Uh, one more from Tim. I have plenty of time, actually, so I'll keep them coming. Just to say that I just tweeted a link both to the plugin download page and there is a public demo site online if you want to actually try it for yourself. So just find the tweet I just made or come and ask me and I'll give you the link to that. Or just Google it, stack plugin for Moodle. We'll retweet it on Mutai UK Twitter as well. Hi, one of the um, issues we have with stack is it's quite a high learning curve for staff to actually develop the questions I, how do you do sort of staff development in terms of teaching them how to write their questions in Stack? Me? Well, it's me. I have a full-time job to write this, all the Stack questions. So you actually write all the questions yes. for your staff? Yes. I do write all the questions for all these courses. Did you say you're to share them on Moodle.net? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you can, please do. Hi, it's uh, almost the same question, but for students, do you find that the students need a lot of coaching to actually 
take these questions, especially with the, with the line by line one, um, to get their answers in the right format. I know we were talking about whether they learning to type maths into the system, which is kind of covered, but I, th I was thinking about the line by line thing. Do you find they, so it? So they, they have a quiz before actually starting their normal quizzes, which is about how to edit stuff and stack. Um, but it's quite straightforward, actually, because whenever they start typing, they have an extra window appearing. Probably it was somewhere, so, um, in the previous slides. That so you can see your last answer was interpreted as follows, so you are quite sure if you're missing a parenthesis or something, so you can actually check. So the line by line is quite new. We actually used only two or three questions this semester. So they need to actually, um, let's go back, to actually have a few things like the, the, the final form is a factorized and they need to have the two, the two solutions and also have like or or and. So if you have here add, add instead of four, it's, it's not correct because if you have a quadratic, it's like one solution or the other. So for that, they may need a bit of more uh, guidance of what they need to type. Any more? Hi, thank you so much for a really interesting um, introduction to your stack questions. Uh, I'm interested about the overall grading and the f functions that the stack questions would have in your course. Sorry, which one? Um, just what are some of the pedagogical functions, I guess, for stack questions? Are you using them for the end, um, the final grade or so informative? The, I'm guessing both, but I'm interested in where the grade for the student comes from so and it what's is the used, role of um, stack questions. It question. is used for both, so it depends. Like most of these assessments, they count towards the final mark. So students have like... Uh, in, in his mathematics courses, they have 80% from the exam and 20% is from the assessments. So it's somehow split between 10% online assessments and 10% uh, uh, the handwritten assessments. So these assessments count towards the final mark. Uh, maybe not, not all of them, like the seven best of them, but they count. And it's good to give them feedback. So. If the teacher wants to allow the submission, like they may have multiple attempts, it's good to give feedback so the students can actually have a good mark. And also the feedback to be meaningful so that they know what they've done wrong, not just put the correct answer or try to somehow guess the correct answer without knowing how. Great, thank you. So they're used for extra credit as well. I think we also in our university had really good rates for students um, completing uh, optional stack questions. So. I think it's a pretty great tool. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Last last orders, please. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, that was got generated lots of questions, didn't it? Lots of interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have two more presentations.